Hey friends, it is me, Alana. Welcome back to my channel. I have here a book haul for you in this video. I've accumulated some books this summer and so I figured it was time to do my haul for you. So some of these were sent to me by publishers, some of these I bought, and then I I think some of these might even be gifts. Um, it's been a minute, so bear with me as I figure this stuff out. I figured that I would do this haul now because uh, I have a little bit of a life update. I got into grad school, which is pretty awesome. And sadly, that means I have to leave my job at Barnes & Noble, which I am so sad about. Gonna miss the discount and, of course, the people I work with and selling books, but also my discount. Um, so I kind of went a little crazy and I just started using, like, buying all the books I've been eyeing for a while. Just because I want to go ahead and use my discount as much as I can before I lose it. And then after, literally after I start grad school, I'm going to be going on a long haul book buying ban for the rest of the year mostly because I don't really have many anticipated reads um, coming out at the end of this year but also I'm trying to be better about saving while I am in grad school so I'm trying to be a better adult I guess for lack of better words but I'm hopefully gonna still be able to create videos and I, I just gotta obviously plan my time accordingly and yeah. Anyways, we're just gonna dive right into this book haul. These are completely out of order, and yeah. One of the books I bought was um, Playing the Palace by Paul Rudnick. I had been eyeing this in the store for a while, and it sounds pretty kind of cute, honestly. Like a little cute short rom-com, um, and I've kind of already started it. So I figured it would be a fun read to have. Oh, it's about this guy who recently just got dumped, basically, and he accidentally meets the Prince of England, I'm pretty sure. And he is openly gay, and so he's like the idol of all gay men in this story. <laughs> so from there, I guess it turns into like a cute little rom-com almost. I'm kind of excited just to see what happens in this and see if it's good or not. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Red, White, and World Blue, but obviously different. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what happens in this one. Next, I bought The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. I bought this because of Erin from Booked and Busy. She said that she thought it would be something I really would enjoy. So I just went ahead and bought it when I saw it at my store. Um, it's apparently about a girl who's a princess and she gets married off to the enemy kingdom. And it's because there's like this dark plan for her to kill the prince. So there's like a whole underbelly plot coming along um and i'm pretty sure she was like raised her whole life for her one goal to be to kill this prince and i don't know it just sounds intriguing and like a little intense like dark fantasy so i'm definitely here for it all right the next one i bought is the nature of riches by rachel griffin i have heard interesting things about this book and honestly the cover kind of drew me in um first and then the synopsis sounded really interesting i believe it's about a girl who has powers so she's a witch and her pa her powers um control or relate to nature and so Throughout this book, she's trying to figure out um, how to basically control her powers and how to make them work without endangering the people she loves and the people she surrounds herself with. So, I don't know, it just sounds like a, one of those like mystery books where she's just like, how do I be powerful, but also how do I not kill my family? I don't know. But it sounds interesting, so. Next, I got Tokyo Ever After by Miko Jean. This sounded so cute when I heard about it. And this cover is just gorgeous. It's about a girl who is Japanese-American. And she grew up not knowing who her father was. And she happens to stumble upon 
um, information that leads her to discovering that her father is basically the prince of Japan. And so she goes out and I guess embraces this new lifestyle. I don't know. It reminds me of The Princess Diaries, but it just sounds like a really fun, cute kind of story. So I'm definitely excited to check this out and see if it's as good as I think it will be. Right, the next couple of books I got from Simon Teen. So thank you to them for sending me these. So first I got Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I've heard really, really good things about this. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out. And then next I got Aristotle and Dante Dive into the Waters of the World, which is this is an advanced copy, which comes out in October. So I'm really excited to have both of these and to just check out why everybody loves these so much because um every time i see these books everybody's raving about them so well at least the first one so i'm definitely excited next i got a bind up of two of jen bennett's books books which i'm super excited about um it's hate to love you which is a bind up of alex approximately in starry eyes so i am super kind of excited to like have this i really enjoy jen bennett's books and her writing i've read alex approximately and i really really loved it and starry eyes is another one i want to get to on her backlist so i'm definitely excited that I was sent this. Um, also, this cover is just really cute overall, so love that. Next, I got Between You, Me, and the Honeybees by Amelia Diane Combs. Um, this, I believe, is about a girl who doesn't want to go to college. She wants to take over her family's honey business, and she has to tell her mom, but she doesn't know how yet. Uh, but she also kind of falls for a guy that is in a rival honey business or some type of business that's their rival um and so she has to deal with that too and the repercussions of like the fact that she's dating a family rival it sounds really cute and this cover is kind of cute so i definitely want to check this out and see if it's good next i have the mythic coda rose by jennifer nistley so this i believe is about a girl whose father was a famous rock star and her father i believe is dead and so she's trying to basically navigate new york city and find out more about him while also falling for another girl so sounds kind of cool the next book i have is kind of sort of fine by spencer hall so this is about a girl and a boy who both are going through their senior year the girl had a very public breakdown so she's trying to lay low and hope everybody gets over that because <laughs> she doesn't want that to be what she's known for forever and the boy is trying to make this his year to make finally be noticed in his school I guess and they somehow get paired together for a project and shenanigans ensues from there it sounds like or they like form a bond or something like that but all right next i have after the ink dries by cassie gustafson so this um i actually read a little bit of because i wasn't sure what it was about so it's about a boy and a girl <laughs> who start dating they the girl moves to town and they just kind of hit it off really quickly and they start um dating and one night at a party something happens where she is assaulted and he ends up having a part to play in everything that happens that night. And from there, it's like a, a digression of her coming to terms with everything that happened to her and also coming to the terms with, with the fact that this guy that she thought she liked took a part. And... It's about him coming to terms with the fact that he's not who he thought he would be, basically. Like, he has to come to terms with his actions and realize the ramifications of them, if that makes sense. This was a really in different, different, different book. I want to say trigger warnings for assault, um, especially sexual assault in regards to the stuff that happens um to her it's a very honestly disturbing night um <laughs> uh yeah so 
it's a, it's a, I say pick this up at your own risk just because of trigger warnings. Um, also trigger warnings for attempted suicide, um, self-harm, and oh, pretty sure there's some other stuff that happens, but those are like the most I can remember. So I definitely also recommend checking out reviews for this and finding the trigger warnings that hopefully someone has listed. So yeah. Next, I got two graphic novels, The Dire Days of Willow Weep Manor, which I don't know what this is about, but it sounds cute. And then Long Distance by Whitney Gardner. Um, this also looks cute, so. Excitement. Also, you don't really see that many black graphic novels, so get for it. All right, so continuing on, almost done. Not really, but slightly there. So the next book I bought was For the Wolf by Hannah Whitten. So first of all, I've heard good things about this. If you love like like villain stories, or maybe not villain stories, but like the girl getting with the villain almost, I think this is, this, this is that type of book. Um, but also it sold out within like the first week at my store and we were sold out for a solid couple of weeks before we could get more copies in. So I took that as a sign just to buy it because it's obviously good, so I'm a, I'm a really excited about this. Also, it's a Red Riding Hood retelling, I'm pretty sure. So, here, let me just read you the synopsis. As the only second daughter born in centuries, Red has one purpose, to be sacrificed to the wolf in the Wilderwood in the hope he'll return the world's captured gods. Red is almost relieved to go. Plagued by a dangerous power she can't control, she knows that at least in the Wilderwood, she can't hurt those she loves. Again. But the legends lie. The wolf is a man, not a monster. Her magic is a calling, not a curse, and if she doesn't learn how to use it, the monsters the gods have become will swallow the world the world and her world whole. That sounds dope. Next, I think this is one of my anticipated reads of the summer. Pretty sure. Um, I got XOXO by Axie O. This one, this cover is gorgeous. Look at this cover. It's gorgeous. Second of all, the synopsis just sounds really good. Jenny didn't get to be an award-winning classically trained cellist without choosing practice over fun. That is until the night she meets Jai Wu. Mysterious, handsome, and just a little bit tormented, Jai Wu is exactly the kind of distraction Jenny would normally avoid, and yet she finds herself pulled into spending an unforgettable evening wandering Los Angeles with him on the night before his flight home to South Korea. With Jai Wu an ocean away, there's no use in dreaming of what could have been, but when Jenny and her mother move to Seoul to take care of her ailing grandmother, who does Jenny meet at the Elite Arts Academy she's just been accepted to? Jai Wu. Finding the dreamy stranger who swept her you off your feet in your hometown is one thing, but Jai Wu isn't just any student. Turns out he's a member of one of the biggest K-pop bands in the world. And like most K-pop idols, Jai Wu is strictly forbidden from dating anyone. When a relationship means not only jeopardizing her place at her dream music school, but also endangering everything Jai Wu's worked for, Jenny has to decide once and for all just how much she's willing to risk for love. Oh, it just sounds so cute. I'm hella excited for this. Next, I have the Fairy Loot book for July? June? June, July? I think it's June. And that is Fire with Fire by Destiny Sor Soria. Um, this sounds really interesting. I First of all, I love this bright orange spray painting. Um, and if you look at the naked cover it's just as gorgeous yes that is a dragon so it's about two sisters who both i think are dragon trainers or dragon hunters they're both dragon hunters and they both end up diverging onto different paths one of them wants to protect the dragons she forms a connection with one and wants to help them and the other is sticking to what she was raised to do hunt them so it sounds really intriguing and I'm here for it. Alright, next book I got is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim and I'm really excited to read that. But this book was, first of all, gorgeous, but also it sounded really interesting, so I couldn't help but buy it. Um, I believe it's a fantasy about a princess who must save her kingdom from her evil stepmother. Next I got the Atlas 6 by Olivia Blake. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what this is about. <laughs> Chanel said it was really good and then Cell said it was really good so I just went ahead and got it. I think it was Cell that said it was good. Either way I bought it. So here we are. I know it's a fantasy. I think it's like a either a dark fantasy or a dark academia. 
I know it's about a secret society. I think there's like maybe a competition to get into the society. Either way, I kind of want to go in without knowing much about it. Next, I bought Happy Singles Day by Anne Marie Walker. This one sounded like a cute story. Um, as a certified professional organizer, everything in Paige Parker's world is as it should be. Perfect apartment, perfect office, perfect life. And now the perfect vacation plan to honor Singles Day. Because who needs a man anyways? They have zero taste in quality TV. They leave the toilet seat up and sleep with your best friend. No thanks. Her life is fine just the way it is. As the owner of a now dormant bed and breakfast, Lucas Croft has built a simple quiet life. It's only him and his five-year-old daughter, which is just the way he likes it. Because who needs a woman anyways? They nag you to clean up your stuff, want the toilet seat put down, and expect the dishes to be done the same day the meal is cooked. No thanks. His life is fine just the way it is. But when Paige books a room that Lucas's well-intentioned sister listed without his knowledge, their worlds collide. If they can survive the week together, they just might discover exactly what they've both been missing. Isn't that a cute? I love single dad, like, romances where, like, there's a single dad. I really like those. So, I figured I would give this a try and see if it's a fun read. Next, I got Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. I've been eyeing this at the store for a while. Um, it's about a family, and I'm just going to read you a synopsis. So, a formidable outlaw family that claims to be the first among nations, a son destined to lead thrust suddenly into power, three fierce young women of the Rotten, the Queen's premier guard, a legendary street thief leading a mission determined to prove herself, a dark secret that is a threat to the entire continent. When outlaw leader meets reformed thief, a cat and mouse game of false moves ensues, bringing them int intimately together in a battle that may cost them their lives and their hearts. It sounds pretty good. Next, I got The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is because of Cell, because uh, they told me how, well, actually, they raved to the group chat about how good this book was, and I couldn't resist picking it up. So, yeah, all I know is I think there are vampires, and it's a fantasy, and that's it. <laughs> Next, I got another, like, summary romance. I got The Lemon Sisters by Jill Shalvis. I don't know, it just sounded intriguing about two sisters who basically have to, like, mend their bond and eventually fall in love along the way. It just sounded cute. Next, another anticipated read I got is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. Okay, for real, I don't remember much about this book. All I remember, though, is that I'm pretty sure there's a polyamorous relationship in this, and as soon as I learned that, I was like, gimme, because why not? So I'm here for it, and it's a dark fantasy with a polyamorous relationship, so sounds amazing. Next uh, that I bought was the <laughs> first book in the Bridgerton series, The Duke and I. Um, I couldn't resist. I watched the show. Pretty good. Aaron read the books and said it was okay, so I figured I would give it a try. I kind of want to know more about this family, so I'm willing to go ahead and dive into the series to learn about the rest of them. All right, and then I got three books as gifts uh, from my friends, so thank you to them for these. Um, Kat from For the Love of Books sent me The Kiss Quotient, which you so much I've actually been really wanting to read this and the other side of perfect um which is about a girl who I think she injures herself um and she's like a dancer and she has to then basically have a normal life in high school have a normal high school experience and she has to like figure out how to fit in I think but it sounded good so and then my very good friend Chanel sent me ace of spades by Farida Abike Yemide I'm so sorry if I said that so wrong, <laughs> but I am kind of hyped for this because Monet and Chanel both read it and loved it. I think Aaron read it too, so half the group chat has read it. Maybe the majority they have read it and I just haven't because I'm lame, but I'm here for it. Sounds really cool. This was a long haul. I'm very, very sorry, but I'm done. Completely done, so... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. If you like it, please give it a good old thumbs up. If you have any comments about maybe any of the books I should read first, please leave that in the comment section. If you're not good at commenting, just leave me an emoji. Leave me, like, a sun emoji. Because it's sunny. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, and if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. You are also flowers and world full of weeds.